this morning, when we rolled it out, I was refreshing the page. Oh, how many people watched the video already? And how many people commented already? I was like a little kid, really excited. So I really believe in it. I'm very excited. And I'm jazzed that you guys are going to come on board and we're going to do this together. It's going live. You can buy it on August 21st, which is a very special day, but we're going to talk about it later. All right. What app do you recommend to do the video? Magdalena wants to know. Really good question, Magdalena. The default one on your smartphone is good enough. Like the one on iPhone, I have an iPhone 6, and the examples you're going to see throughout the course will be done on iPhone 6. It's perfectly fine. There are other apps I will recommend as we go through the course. The problem is you have to learn things like how to set exposure and how to set uh, focus and all that if you really want to fuss with it. Not worth it. Just use the one that's built on your phone. It's fine. Movie Pro is the one I use, by the way. If you want to get a little advanced, I'll give you a tip. It's like nine bucks. It's not bad, but you don't really need it. It's not necessary. There's nothing there. The only reason I like Movie Pro, and I'll tell you why I like it, is not necessarily that you can set exposure and adjust the picture a little bit. That's most of the time not necessary. The phone is pretty smart to do that on its own. It's the audio volume. You can manually set how, how much volume do you want on the mic. That's what I like. So if you want to check it out, there's an alternative also for Android, but for iPhone, I use the Movie Pro. Cool? And you can do it on iPhone. So, but you can do a pretty good live with your iPhone. But here's the thing about life, which brings me to a good point. You've seen real estate agents do lives, live broadcast. My suggestion is this. I would rather prepare, rehearse a little, film, and edit a good video than broadcast a shitty live. Because in most cases, there is only one, most instances, there's only one advantage to doing Facebook Live versus posting a video. And that, that is you're going to get more views. But here's my philosophy. Tell me if this makes sense to you. I would rather have less people watch a pretty nice video with call to action that has talking points, good structure, is to the point where I look good, I sound good, and if I don't sound good, I can retake it until I'm happy with it. I do a little bit of editing so it's nice and tight and I post that rather than go live and deliver my message live. Because here's the benefit of live. There are two really. You attract pretty nice viewership, like we get with replays, a few thousand people watch these weekly, which is great. I, I appreciate that. But it's the interaction. It's the conversation that you and I can have, or you can post questions, you can, you can post comments, and I can read them, and I can answer, and we can, we can have a, a dialogue. But most of the time, when you promote a new listing or you're doing an open house, that dialogue is not necessarily... It's not like people are going to ask you 50 questions about the property, or it's not like they're going to see it and, holy shit, John is making a video live open house, honey, let's jump in the car, let's go. That's not going to happen most of the time. And then you're running into a potential problem of having an unprepared, unrehearsed, pretty shitty video that can put people off. That's what I see very often when I review people's videos, when I review other people's videos. So my preference or my recommendation to you, unless you absolutely see a clear benefit of doing live, don't do live. Just record a good video. Edit it. You can do it right on your smartphone. I will teach you in the course how to do it with iMovie. But there's a whole bunch of free and paid editors where you can spend just a few minutes, take out the bad parts, the oohs and ahs and the pauses, tighten it up a little, nice call to action, maybe a lower third, contact information, and you have a good video that you can produce on the go, right in your car. You can post it straight from your car if you want to. That's a better alternative most of the time. And really, all you need is a good mic, and maybe a little tripod, and maybe a little stick. You'll see all the gear next week that I recommend that we use. I use that daily. And you're good to go. So that's my suggestion. Don't ruin your image, your status, by shitty life when you can do a video. Now, maybe you have an instance where live is appropriate. Maybe there is an event or something that you want to share live, and you want to be very spontaneous, and you're comfortable and confident and experienced enough on camera to deliver it. But I think when you're starting with video, that's not a good choice. I would start with video, clean it up, get comfortable with it first, post it as a nice polished video, and then go to live. That's an advanced stuff. All right, I mean, is that helpful, you guys?